Insights on Shannon Lee's Be Water, My Friend, narrated by Glenn Argenti. Overview Bruce Lee is an icon in the worlds of martial arts and cinema. He remains an inspiration to this day, but we should never strive to be Bruce Lee. We should strive to be our most authentic and truest selves. This is what Bruce's daughter, Shannon Lee, explains in Be Water, My Friend 2020. Bruce's philosophy for martial arts and life was to be like water, constantly in motion, ready for anything, and always able to adapt and evolve. Yet we should also be rigid, in the sense that we never change who we are. This is how we express ourselves freely, improve our relationships, and truly live our lives. Martial arts may not be for everyone, but Bruce Lee's principles and example for how to live can benefit anyone trying to achieve their goals in whatever discipline they find themselves in. Be Like Water Bruce Lee practiced martial arts every day from the age of 13 until his death at 32. He believed martial arts was the perfect metaphor for life and always wanted to experience the real. Real fighting, real living, and real world lessons. Bruce was trained by Yip Man, also known as Ip Man. Bruce quickly became a star student but Yip Man was also trying to teach him the importance of gentleness and fluidity, not just brute strength and tenacity. Bruce had a tough time understanding these lessons. But Bruce didn't give up. One day out on the water, frustrated from not grasping Yip Man's teachings, he punched the water. He realized the water was fluid, as was its nature, and felt no pain. Bruce wanted to be like water. Even if you're not interested in martial arts, you can apply Bruce Lee's life lessons, whatever your career or passion. We must strive to live like water, which means being open and pliable to the possibilities and opportunities of life. One of the first lessons to be learned from water is pliability. In martial arts, it is crucial to be pliable and fluid in order to avoid your opponent's attacks. In life, being pliable means being mobile and able to adapt. Bruce also emphasized the importance of the on-guard position in martial arts, the starting position from which all movement should begin. It is both loose yet appropriately rigid, just as we should be in life ready to shift at a moment's notice, but rigid in our focus. In the Western world, yin and yang are opposites. In the Eastern world, however, yin and yang are complements to each other. As humans, we should not disregard opposite experiences, but embrace them as complementary. We need to be whole in order to enjoy the full experience of life. Emptiness When you are listening, you must actively listen and shut off your own opinions. If you're listening to someone and always thinking about how you are more right than they are, you're not truly listening, and you will not learn anything. Emptiness, while entering a conversation, means entering it with a state of openness and neutrality. When you crowd your mind with previous thoughts and emotions, you close your mind to new information. You essentially limit yourself. Choiceless awareness is a term Bruce came up with that describes being aware of all your surroundings without making a judgment on them. It is seeing things for what they truly are, instead of seeing them through biases that limit what you can see. Absence of thought is another term Bruce came up with, that goes along with choiceless awareness. It means not getting carried away and obsessing over a single thought so much that it ruins all other sensory input that affects your perception in the moment. Remaining completely present is a very difficult task for many people. Bruce thought of presence as emptying your cup of the past and future and always trying to fill it back up with the present. To be a master at it like Bruce, this requires practice. Meditation is one of the best tools in clearing our minds and becoming present with our thoughts. Bruce was a huge proponent of meditation as a way to train the mind. While initially it will be difficult to meditate for long periods of time, stick with it. Emptiness is a process. There is no end. We are simply changing the way we react with the world around us, becoming constantly perceptive and curious of it, and using that information to make the best decisions possible. This ultimately benefits us greatly. Never Stop Learning Bruce Lee began teaching martial arts in the Chinatown community in Oakland, California. His methods broke from traditional techniques, and he opened his schools to all races, which ruffled the feathers of Chinatown elders. They arranged a fight. If Bruce lost, he would have to shut down his schools. The fight was exceptionally unorthodox. There were no rules, and ultimately Bruce had to chase his challenger around the room and attack him from the back. Bruce won the fight, but he reflected that he was unprepared for this type of anything-goes fighting. Bruce began thinking that if he wanted to be a truly fluid, physically fit, and well-rounded fighter, he needed to get rid of traditional fighting wisdom. He needed to create his own, which he did. Bruce had an insatiable hunger for knowledge and learning. He was always open to new ideas and learning from other fighting techniques, like Western boxing and fencing, to further develop his art of Jeet Kune Do, his own personal martial art. Our own ignorance is simply a lack of understanding of our soul or true self. 
We often listen to our ego and follow it to things that we think we want, instead of searching inside ourselves to actually figure that out. We must work hard to identify our own ignorance. Looking at your shortcomings and analyzing them can be extremely difficult, but this is also the basis for self-improvement. In order to get better, we must figure out where we are going wrong. Once we understand ourselves, we can understand our problems and eventually fix them. Combat is like a relationship. When facing an opponent, Bruce found it was important to always remain connected with them and to always stay aware. Don't disconnect from the moment or break your concentration. In the end, combat is just a very intense relationship and we need relationships to improve ourselves as well. Bruce never believed in competitions because all the energy is spent on trying to win, not necessarily on growing. There is no winning or losing in life, so the sooner we realize that, the sooner we can focus on simply being present in the moment. Bruce identified six diseases related to competition. They are to desire victory, to resort to technical cunning, to display all that's been learned, to desire to awe the enemy, to play the passive role, and to desire to get rid of whatever disease you are affected by. All these diseases involve an attachment to an outside outcome, which ultimately creates a disconnect from yourself and other people. All of them isolate you and stagnate your growth. Become aware of them in you and rid those desires from your life. Our relationships are simply a mirror in which we discover ourselves. We can learn a lot about ourselves from studying our relationships. Think of your partner or friend as a sparring partner, both of you working to improve each other and your relationship. In martial arts, there is a widely practiced principle called the Law of Adaptation, which involves accepting the flow of an opponent's attack, not opposing it with your own force, and borrowing that force to eventually defeat your opponent. In some relationships, sometimes you have to accept the forces your partner is sending out to you, instead of responding with your own force. Doing that will only lead to more collisions. By borrowing your partner's force, you can remain present in the situation, instead of just avoiding it altogether. Achieving Our Goals Kung Fu is translated into skill achieved through hard work and discipline. We each have our own unique Kung Fu styles, and if we want to cultivate our highest potential, we must identify and perfect our Kung Fu. Bruce had innate skills that helped him become the man he was, but he also had several flaws, like terrible vision, average height, and a deadly temper. What made him truly great was his desire to cultivate his innate skills until he became the greatest. If you have a big goal or dream, you need to write it down and energize it. To energize it, the goal should re-excite you every time you think about it. Your goal should always be very clear so you know what to work towards and eventually achieve. With large goals, it is extremely important to stay active towards that goal. Otherwise, we can stagnate and begin coming up with reasons why that goal is unachievable. Begin with small goals, accomplish those, and build your confidence. One important practice to establish a great mindset is constantly affirming our abilities and talents. Bruce would carry seven affirmations and repeat them to himself every day. They were affirmations to his memory, subconscious mind, imagination, emotion, reason, conscience, and willpower. Another method of understanding yourself is understanding your body through physical exercise. Aside from the positive endorphins and benefits that exercise offers, tuning into your body can help you become aware of sensations and feelings that sedentary activities cannot always provide. The process of reaching our goals will be a long and difficult one, beset with failures and barriers that need to be overcome. We need to embrace this process if we have any hopes of accomplishing our goals. Approach change and growth with enthusiasm, and results will come quickly. Overcoming Obstacles in 1964, Bruce was at a karate tournament, demonstrating Jeet Kune Do, when he caught the attention of Jay Sebring, a celebrity hairstylist in Hollywood. He got Bruce a screen test for the TV show The Green Hornet, and he landed the role of sidekick Kato. That role, though the TV show only lasted one season, springboarded Bruce into Hollywood, and he saw what a large impact he could have as an Asian actor. He worked hard to get empowering roles, turning down many that negatively portrayed Asian stereotypes. He was well on his way to making significant progress on that goal when he suffered a major setback. While working out in his backyard, Bruce injured his fourth sacral nerve and doctors warned he might never do martial arts again. Obstacles are bound to happen in any worthwhile endeavor. When you reach a barrier, don't force your way through it, but sit patiently and learn from it. You always have a choice on how you will respond to something. It's not what happens that's important, it's how you react. Your agency and choices when deciding on how to react to a problem are extremely powerful. You can choose to create even more problems by sulking, getting angry, or giving up. Or you can learn from your challenge and overcome it. Don't let people's opinions of you change who you are or force you to become something you're not. 
Despite the world knowing Bruce as one of the greatest martial artists ever, he took his time with his recovery because that's what he needed to do. You have to believe you're going to succeed in order to succeed. Bruce did not put his dreams on hold, despite having back pain for the rest of his life. He simply restructured his plan and path to eventually reach his goal. Living Life On March 31, 1993, Brandon Lee, one of Bruce Lee's children, was involved in a deadly accident while filming a movie. His sister Shannon Lee flew to Wilmington, North Carolina, where she found out that he had died. Shannon eventually moved to L.A. from New Orleans. She'd hoped to start her acting career, but instead went through life aimlessly, grieving her brother's death. She called that period of life anti-existence, when she had a devout resistance to living. What helped break Shannon out of her mental fog was being given her father's writings to look through and edit for publishing. She read through them and became inspired to live as her father had. Faith essentially means believing and trusting, and the only faith you truly need is faith in yourself. You need to believe in yourself and your inner guidance system to make correct decisions and choices, and you can develop that faith over time. There is a concept in Buddhism that Shannon used to help her get past her brother's death, and it is called the Eightfold Path. It is typically presented as right view, right purpose, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right awareness, and right meditation. Bruce Lee translated the Eightfold Path as learn what is right and wrong, decide to be cured, speak with the aim to be cured, always act and think about your recovery, don't develop habits that affect your recovery, and don't rush through it. Don't lose your enthusiasm, grasp onto it, and have it lead you towards recovery. Enthusiasm is the natural byproduct of conscious growth and healing. The Living Void The Living Void, one of Bruce's concepts, states that water is always in direct and immediate response and co-creation with the environment surrounding it. Water always exists in this state of the living void. The first principle and aspect of the living void is to have an open mind and to get rid of the dualistic way of thinking. That means getting rid of preconceived notions of what is good or bad and approaching every experience with honesty and sincerity and without prejudice. To get rid of our brain's dualistic way of thinking and rationalizing, we first have to be aware of it. You want to act always on the spur of the moment, giving the world your truest and most authentic self, not a predetermined version of yourself. Bruce created his own stages of human cultivation, partiality, fluidity, emptiness, and Jeet Kune Do. Partiality is the first stage and where we all start acting unconsciously and based primarily on our preconceived assumptions. We must act consciously, otherwise we will remain in partiality. Fluidity is the second stage, and this is where we admit that we and everyone else have a lot of learning and growing to do. This stage is where we focus on ourselves, acknowledge our mistakes, and commit to bettering ourselves every single day. The third stage is emptiness, and this is where we bridge the gap between conscious and unconscious behavior. This means eliminating the difference in our choices when we act from our conscious thoughts and our unconscious gut reactions. The result is acting from a place of cultivated instinct. Our own unique way. The final stage of cultivation is Jeet Kune Do. This means you are completely fluid and live life in your own unique and authentic way. In this stage, we become a true reflection on the outside of who we are on the inside. We no longer have to portray a certain image for ourselves because we have achieved inner peace and tranquility. When Bruce starred in the film Enter the Dragon, it was his greatest chance to become a Hollywood star. But there was a big problem. The script was awful. He had to argue with the production studio and send his own notes and rewrites to make changes. But when shooting finally began, the final script did not include any of the changes Bruce had sent in, despite the studio telling him they would do so. Bruce refused to show up for shooting until the changes were made. The standoff lasted two weeks, and eventually the studio caved and made all of Bruce's suggested changes. It was clear he was ready to throw away this opportunity if the final product was going to be half-assed. Enter the Dragon isn't a great movie, but it is a great moment in cinematic history for how it portrayed Bruce, how it showcased his talents and vision to the world, and how someone could be successful while remaining their true authentic self. The key to succeeding is to remain grounded. You must remain true to you, otherwise your journey will be a loss, as you will undoubtedly be losing parts of you along the way. While water is constantly in motion, the moon always remains still, tranquil, and unchanging. Your journey will require you to be both. Bruce the Inspiration Bruce died on July 20th, 1973, from a cerebral edema. He inspired anyone who came in contact with him personally or saw his work. He was also the model for how life should be lived, endlessly creating and personally liberated. There are many stories of Bruce's kindness, and Shannon believes this stems from martial arts. He saw people like fighting styles. They are all essentially rooted in the same things, 
and should mix and flow freely among each other. Martial arts may not be for everyone, but the approach of being like water is something that anyone can apply to their discipline or work. That's what Bruce wanted. Training yourself to be the best version of you requires you to be compassionate, empathetic, and honest with others. While we should not excuse bad behavior, we should also not spread hate. The best way to create change is by loving those around you and connecting with them. You have no control over others, so what you choose to do and how you act among others speaks volumes. We have to learn from our setbacks, embrace them, because each one is an opportunity to learn and grow. And we can always do that in an atmosphere of kindness to others, and even more importantly, ourselves. A quote commonly misquoted is coming from Bruce is, the key to immortality is first living a life worth remembering. Regardless, he embodied that every single day despite his life being cut tragically short. Do not try to be Bruce Lee. Always strive to be yourself and the very best version of yourself. That is what Bruce would want, and that's what the world needs. We hope you enjoyed the insights on Shannon Lee's Be Water, My Friend. Purchase the book to learn more. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Visit instared.co to get more insights from this and thousands of other books. Use the code YouTube to get a discount on your subscription.